All right. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to the One Drop Shower Ministry of Preparedness. My name is Mike Albert. I'll be your host, bringing you the most of Bible prophecies, scriptures, and current events. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to all those of you that celebrated. Uh, please support our sponsor, AmberTracks.com. That uh, helps to support this channel for your emergency survival supplies and waterproof Bibles. Uh, it's AmberTracks.com. Amber like the color, tracks like railroad tracks. AmberTracks.com. All right, uh, we're going to get into the last seven of the seven churches, and this is in Revelation uh, chapter 3, the lukewarm church. Let us begin with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this ministry of preparedness. Uh, please uh, bless all our viewers and their needs, their children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. We invite the Holy Spirit to be in the midst here with us to have the words spoken be your words, Lord, and not mine. Please give us wisdom and knowledge to interpret these so that we may better understand these uh, seven churches, Lord, and to help them resonate within our own lives and within our own churches and the world, Lord. Help us to win souls to your kingdom, Lord, with this wisdom and knowledge and to uh, heed your warnings here and give us ears to hear what you are saying in these letters, Lord. We ask that you please uh, bless the viewers' homes, Lord, their children, great-grandchildren, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, Lord. Please help them to get good school grades. Please protect them from Satan whispering in their ears and, their temp and his temptations. We ask that you uh, please give a blessing upon their foods that they eat on their table, Lord. Please help it to be good food, healthy food. And uh, please help us to, uh, uh, as myself as well, Lord, to have a financial blessing, Lord. Please uh, bless these viewers uh, with an abundance. And we claim your promise of prosperity, Lord, of financial prosperity. Please bless our nation, Lord, here in the United States, our military, our leaders, um, to respond to emergencies in everything that they do, Lord, for this country, uh, to glorify and honor you. Please help to bring prayer back into our schools, Lord, uh, and your Ten Commandments proudly displayed everywhere, on billboards, at hospitals, and schools, and and uh, re replace it onto the TVs, Lord, just displayed there in airports around the world, Lord. Just instead of CNN spewing out garbage, Lord, and uh, hatred and um, bias and uh, spinning the, the agendas into their own um, ideology to brainwash people, this is your Ten Commandments, Lord, because we know we love you, uh, you love us, and we love you, Lord. Uh, we ask that you please uh, bring home our boys and girls in the military, Lord. Uh, please close down all the bases around the world, Lord. Let us take care of ourselves here um, and our borders. Help us to build our borders on the north and south shores, Lord, and to secure our waters. And, Lord, we ask that you please help uh, those first responders going towards emergencies to help them to uh, stay safe and uh, those that are affected by these uh, emergencies to uh, rebuild their lives and be comforted uh, in their time of need. Uh, and a special blessing, Lord, to help uh, help those in that submarine, that Australian submarine, Lord, that can't be found, Lord, uh, that if it is indeed in trouble, Lord, that you um, help to raise it from the bottom of the oceans, Lord, and to uh, maybe have, let your name be praised, Lord, through this, perhaps through uh, some divine intervention, Lord. Please help those um, to be saved or found and uh, rescued. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I can't imagine being, let alone having claustrophobia, <laughs> being inside a tin can, um, being stuck uh, at the bottom of the ocean. And uh, am I hearing an echo? Oh, no. no. I shouldn't be. Okay. Being stuck at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, that's got to be pretty scary, right? All right? Let me make a quick screen adjustment here so we can uh, see less of me and more of the world. God's plan, right? So much to catch up on. I don't think I'm going to be able to catch up on news today, but let's uh, get with the scripture and because that's more important. I'll leave this window open in case uh, something pops up here. All right, a lukewarm church. 
so far, uh, and this is the last uh, church. We so far we did the uh, the first church, which was the Loveless Church. Second one was the Persecuted Church, then the Compromising Church, the Corrupt Church, the Dead Church, the Faithful Church, and now the Lukewarm Church. Uh, this is the Andrew Study Guide I'll be reading from. It's a new and um, New King James Version of the Bible. And I choose it because it has the commentaries below and the cross-references in between, which proves the Bible is true 100% over thousands of years. No other book can boast this. All right, starting in verse, chapter 3 and verse 14 in Revelation, the lukewarm church. And to the angel of the church of Laodiceans, write, These things says the Amen, the faithful, and the truth witness, the beginning of the creation of God, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot, so then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth, <laughs> because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, salve, that you may see. Wow, I, I got to pause right there a second because um, <clears throat> the message Jesus has given to, to, to John here is that um, you, you cannot buy God. No matter how rich you are, um, you're not going to be able to get your salvation uh, from these earthly um these earthly things um, that God does not accept for his entrance into, into his kingdom. So he's saying, hey, listen, buy from me uh, which you cannot, only through faith. Um, so your money means nothing, basically. I, mean, I don't care what the value is of it, whatever denomination it is, whatever currency it is, you know, whatever earthly values it may hold and possessions you can get from this, you cannot be atoned for your sins because you're wretched in my eyes. Your salvation is bought and paid for only through the sacrifice and blood of his son Jesus. And it's an insult to him. And, and his sacrifice was in vain, seemingly, to those that are wealthy, that claim they need nothing besides their wealth. <clears throat> and 100% all have been proven wrong. Because they died. And they will continue to die because we are, the price of sin is death. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten there before, I'm sorry, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and di and dine with him, and he with me. Amen. So God's saying he's always having a calling. <clears throat> now, it's interesting how they call a lukewarm church, in it, but, he, but he affiliates the wealth, wealthy man with the lukewarm church. You know, if anything, that's cold. I don't see how that's lukewarm, um, but it, it's his spectrum of his understanding. Perhaps when this letter was written, it was then, um, but it is also to relate to us as well, because there are people in, in, in every church, I think, that have, you know, an abundance of money. They may not think so, but I'd say more often than not, everyone in the church is really just struggling, you know month to month, if not paycheck to paycheck. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so 
So God is always knocking on the door. Not literal knocking. He's always having this calling for us to come to Him and also to be able to um, recognize and feel that, um, to hear His voice, um, or to see it in nature, to see it in others, to see it within ourselves. We have to constantly do a checkup from the neck up, a spiritual analysis of ourselves. Are we hearing God's calls? Are we doing God's work? If God walked in right now into that doorway and found us doing ABC, uh, would, be, would we be ashamed as if we were naked? And, and you have to ask yourself constantly that. Whether it's a thought, whether it's something you're looking at and processing a thought or gazing upon or lusting thereof of the flesh or of money or of a car or a house or something, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, God's like, you know, tapping you on the shoulder. What are you doing? <laughs> I didn't sacrifice my son so you could do this. You know, get back to the books. Study. All right, moving on. Um, verse 21. To him, who over, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne... And I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. So Jesus is saying to John here, listen, be like me. I, this is how you do it. Overcome these obstacles, these temptations, these wealth, the, the, these shameful things. Uh, heed my calling, my warnings. And that's it. It'll be, before you know it, you'll be sitting at my throne as I sit at my father's throne. And so the invitation is extended onto you. Um, you know, there's, there's choice A or choice B. That's it. There's no other choice in this world. Because uh, we're already dead in sin. We just have to now be absolved of those sins and repent with faith in Christ to get to choice A, which is the kingdom of heaven. If we do not do this, we are accepting Satan's rule. And you know where that goes. All right, last verse, 22. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. All right, let's see what the commentaries have to say about this. Starting in verse 14 to 22. 14, chapter 3. 14, Laodiceans. Laodicea was about 45 miles southeast east of Philadelphia, 90 miles east of Ephesus. It was known for its wealth, medical school, and lukewarm water supply. Interesting. It may represent the lukewarm condition of the church in today's world. Um, witness, see, one through five, see, one five, witness, which is one five says, witness, there's one four through five and five through six. The faithful witness, kings of the earth, Jesus' qualifications to rule us, his death, resurrection, and heavenly reign. Good enough for me. <clears throat> um, let's see. Okay, beginning. Greek can mean first in time, beginning, or first in rank, ruler. Here the term functions as a title of Jesus, who is the creator and ruler of all things. The, so, uh, the phaseology, fra phraseology should not be misunderstood to suggest that Christ is a creating being, but rather one who begins or initiates the creation of God. Interesting. All right, and uh, verse 16. Hot and cold waters are refreshing and medicinal. Lukewarm water is usually disappointing or even repulsive. Uh, that's the heater, I think. 
Need of nothing, verse 17. Monetary wealth is often associated with spiritual poverty. The rich do not feel their need. Self-deception is the natural human condition. I know what that is. I'm hearing, I'm hearing the, uh, the garbage man picking up the garbage and the cans being slammed down. The other truck. Gold representative uh, represents faith. Represents saving faith. I'm sorry. And white garments. See notes on Revelation three five. I salve. I solve. So Laodicea can see her own lack of authenticity. Yeah, that's what I said. Like, turn on, you know, turn on your spiritual eyes. You know, see things through uh, the glasses of the Bible. And um, let's see, verse 19, let me go up to 22. God's love is the source of his discipline. And 20, stand, knock, see songs 5, 2 through 6. Laod uh, Laodicea has locked God out. He does not force his way in. Elsewhere in the New Testament, Christ's position at the door or at the gates shows the nearness of his return. Amen. And in verse 21, uh, this text sets the stage for the next four chapters which concern God's throne, the Lamb joining God on his throne, and how the saints overcome and join Jesus on his throne. Sometimes like there's two thrones, God's throne, Jesus' throne, which are of one. Um, and that was verse 21, which says, To him who overcome, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, which is Jesus, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. My father on his throne. Sit down with me on. Uh, but actually, no. I'm thinking. I'm, I think it's one throne. It sounds like two thrones in this description here. The Lamb joining God on His throne. Now the saints overcome and join Jesus on His throne. So that it's a joining throne. It's not a separate. Two separate thrones. I stand corrected. Amen. Um, <clears throat> all right, quick news, quick news. Um, what I did was I went and deleted all my emails that are not from the report events here on this map. And, uh, hopefully they're up to date enough. We'll do a quick check again. Otherwise, these Black Friday sales are killing. Uh, that's why I could go through these quickly and not go back and forth, back and forth to the map, to the levels, uh, and just go right to the description. Bring the computer closer. Did I increase the map? Let me increase the map there so I'm not shaking the laptop all over with you guys. Okay. Um, be nice if I could shrink that other thing too. You guys don't need to see that, do you? This thing here, right? Okay, good. How's that look? Almost. We close it all together. No. Perhaps. Just don't know how. All right. I'll have to make this a little bit smaller then, or just shift it over. There we, there we go. That's a good idea. Okay. All right. Um, the date, the location. I'm just going to give the uh, incident that's going on. If it's important uh, or necessary, I'll try to find the location. Unless I could adjust it here up here real quick, too, as well. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I don't need the times. 
All right, in Europe here, a dog was swept away in a fast-flowing water after heavy rain caused widespread flooding and rivers to swell. It has merged. It has emerged. A dog was swept away. So what over, I don't know what emerged. The dog emerged or the rivers emerged. Uh, the pet, pet was swept away from, um, all right, so there's a dog being swept away here, so... Pray for the owner who has been searching for the dog out safely. The Coast Guard did not find it. That's a great. All right. We're all searching for just like you. Know, they're just as important. You know, they're important to us like you know, we are to God. So if one of the 99 of the sheep of flock is missing, go get them. Okay, in China, Asia, magnitude 5 earthquake hits uh, Wulong County of Southwest China Municipality Thursday. According to the China Earthquake Networks Center, the, earth, the quake struck at a depth of about 10 kilometers. Tremor was felt in Chongqing's city districts such, a, such as Yubi and... All right, let's see. Let's get to the numbers. Rescuers... I uh, don't see anything affected. People dead? No. Okay. Moving on. In Iran, we have... Why didn't you go right to the... Sex? That's why I do this quickly. An earthquake measuring 4.3 in Iran happened. 36 people have been injured. No. Oh, come on. Why is that happening? Why are you supposed to go right to this section? Um, in Africa, a six-year-old pupil from this area uh, died from rabies. Oh, no. So I got bit, didn't get uh, treatment, or they don't have it there. He died from rabies. So rabies is deadly. Uh, this isn't working the way it's supposed to work here. It's supposed to be able to... Uh, it's supposed to go right to the description. It's not doing it. Thousands of dead fish in New Zealand washed up on a river at, on the Ka Kapiti coast, leaving local fishermen bemused. But the council insists there's nothing fishy about the large-scale stranding. Right, or large fifth fish deaths. One day we're going to resolve that, or at least the truth is going to come out. All right, New Zealand... Uh, Darwin has just received a drenching with more than 30 millimeters of rain. There's a town called Darwin uh, in New Zealand. Uh, in less than an hour, heavy storms which approached the city from southwest quickly dropped 36 millimeters of rain into Darwin's airport's weather, uh, weather gauges. The, the temperature also dropped more than 30 degrees Celsius to... 23.9 degrees Celsius with winds gusts so far has reached up to 35 kilometers per hour. Thunder. Jeez, wow, I got hit hard with everything. Wind, rain, temperature. Um, thunder. Uh, buildings in the city workers were left running for cover. Man. We're getting hit hard there. Australia, New Zealand. Gravity to fire. Great shoes. If you guys ever want to try a great shoe with um, springs in them? Go to Gravity to fire. Really awesome. All right. Back to the uncooperative uh, emails here. Okay. In uh, Australia, again, New Zealand. Man, they're getting earthquakes. You're getting biological, uh, rabies, crazy weather, heat wave. Uh, maybe enveloping South Australia, wrapping Melbourne. Um, we could be in for a wet and cool summer. The Bureau of Meteorology has upped its prediction of a rare form of La Nina. La Nina. Is that like the uh, El Nino? I don't know. El, yeah, El Nino and La Nina, climate driven. And it said the event is now almost certain to develop with the effect of weather events possible as soon as next month. In a climate note, the weather agency officially moved Australia to La Nina alert, 
which is confirmed sea temperatures in the equatorial Pacific Ocean continued to cool. Um, a key indicator it could also be on its way. La Nina and its more well-known brother El Nino are the two ends of what's known as El Nino, Southern Oscillation or ENSO. This climate cycle can have an impact on temperatures and rainfall in eastern and northern Australia, as well as more extreme weather such as cyclones and droughts. Uh, oceanic indicators of ENSO show a clear progression toward La Nina. Tropical Pacific sea surface temperatures have cooled since late winter, and waters beneath the surface remain cooler than average in the eastern Pacific. However, they are currently just shy of La Nina threshold, Bureau said Thursdays. You know, a couple of things i got to say here. One is, people got to stop fear-mongering and fearing uh, what they perceive to be as abnormal. We don't have reliable science and data going back 5,000, 6,000 years since the beginning of the Earth, the history of the Earth. And ice core samples don't cut it. Um, eyewitness observations and repeatable through observation is an experiment, is science. So if we can't, you know precisely articulate what is going on and prove that it is a cycle um, that we're going to come out of or it's going to get worse. It's fear-mongering. It's panic. It's it's unjustified. You know, um, this, this is really coming out from this, what was that guy's name that did uh, climate control? Al Gore. I hear his name. I, want, I vomit in my mouth every time. You know, it's way too tax- the air, basically. <laughs> they found a way to tax the air we breathe. Um, you know, and then they found a way to, to tax our, not only our health, but our lack of health care as well, too, through Obamacare with the IRS. I mean, are you serious? It's so desperate and pathetic that they're wasting, and, they're wasting money like drunken sailors of those that run this world, or think they run the world, um, that are put in charge of certain agencies or groups or whatever. That that they're in such prob they're in such debt that they can't get out of it. So they have to find another creative way to get more money besides printing it. It's all imploding, folks. It's all imploding. All right, in the Caribbean Sea, we got. Health authorities Wednesday said they were waiting confirmation of a preliminary test to determine whether hurricane-battered Dominica has registered its first case of the unusual virus, hantavirus, spread by rodents. Now, this was coming. I'm sure Texas is getting it, too. Rodents survive these things, folks. And so does their urine, feces, and saliva, which is where the hantavirus comes from. A statement by the Minister of Health and Environment said that confirmatory tests are being done at the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta in the United States and that an epidemiology investigation has not found further cases on the island. Now, here's a thought. They have all these diseases at laboratories. Granted, there's levels you've seen in the movies, you know, these clean rooms, these lockdown rooms, these... Um, frozen rooms, these uh, watertight rooms, airtight rooms, vacuum chambers, these emergency redundancies. Even some of them have a a panic button, like with it burns the entire room down. If something is about to escape, it burns everybody in it, and the virus doesn't get out and escape. The key word here is escape. Um, we think we have it all figured out. But when has man ever had nature figured out? 
Never. You can't point to the history of mankind and nature and say, oh, we knew this was coming. <laughs> we expected this. Um, we can try to predict, but we what we cannot predict, as good as we might get at some things, is the aftermath of how things will unfold, how they will mutate, how they will jump, how they will um, be transferred, transmitted, uh, carried from place to place, and or lay dormant, and then spring up. So, in this ministry here, I provide with you the 100-year plan for survival in the wilderness before Christ comes, during such times of when the safest of the safest of the most secure of human ab abilities to keep things from getting out will get out by, pick your choice, variables, A, B, C, D, whatever it is that mankind uh, secures, nature will dissolve back to nature. For example, CDC Center here in Atlanta, do you have any idea how much diseases are in there that even if one of them got out could kill the whole entire planet? Uh, and that's just diseases. We're not talking about bioweapons now on top of this. So in the aftermath of things breaking down, society being wiped out, you know, the Bible saying, you know, a third of the oceans, a third of the ships, you know, uh, that's a lot. That means the end is right around the corner. Jesus has practically got his, you know, foot in the clouds here with all the angels. We don't know that time frame unfolding. It could be minutes, hours, days, years, decades, centuries, because time unfolds differently in heaven than it does here on earth. So what we may perceive as the seventh seal, here it is, where uh, Jesus is flashing through the sky, sky like lightning, we still have to deal with our unfolding of time and de uh, de the deterioration, the... Um, Osmosis, when is it the right word? Osmosis, not the wrong word. Um, when rust, when rust occurs, what's that called? I'm throwing a blank. But anyway, the deterioration of these security structures, things are going to complicate our or, or our already difficult time surviving in the wilderness. Diseases, viruses, plagues epidemics, pandemics, all in a little test tube hidden in these rooms that are going to deteriorate. They are going to get broken into, sabotaged. Um, perhaps a nuclear bomb goes off in Maryland, D.C., and Atlanta, you know, who knows, gets gets shaken or right on Atlanta. There's a great, you know, like, you know if, if I was Russia, I'd somehow, you know, if I knew I had a strong enough way to disrupt that CDC room and crack its facility in half, I would, put it that way. Um, just on the East Coast alone. But actually, that would be uh, making him vulnerable too as well, unless he had the antidotes for everything. You know, or knew they had a shelf life. You know, or it would spread. You know, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this. I go underground for, you know, six months. Winter kills off everything. Everything's fine. Coming back out. Uh, but then you got the, um, you know, if if these facilities aren't watertight, they're getting spread out in a flood, these diseases. I'm sure they are watertight, but for how long? <laughs> That's the question. Um, and who's to say something shifting around isn't going to break like an earthquake and a, you know, 50,000 50, ton rock falling on top of it isn't going to. Uh, spread it. Now, the same thing applies for, without stretching this out too long of a rant, the same thing applies for bioweapons that are probably more in um, stockpile than these weapons. Not to say they are any more dangerous than the bubonic plague again. All right, had to rant that out. Um, okay, did that, hantavirus. So, go get your natural knowledge of what God offers in, you know, many, as many as you can, 
cures, treatments for these diseases in nature, and or at least broad stroking them to the point of saying, okay, I have a disease, there's a problem here, it doesn't look like the common cold or flu, I don't have antibiotics, or maybe I do, maybe I got some fish antibiotics, um, what else can I do to inoculate this, suppress it, rid the body of this question mark, whatever it is. That's your homework. All right. Ireland, uh, extreme weather. Soldiers were deployed to Mount Mullock in Coleos yesterday to help residents get back to their homes after the town was hit by severe flooding. Okay. Terror attack in uh, Asia. Oh, this almost did it. At least eight people have been confirmed dead and 17 others injured in a suicide bombing rocked Afghanistan's eastern Nan Jahar, Providence capital, Jalalabad city, on Tuesday, a local official said a terrorist blew up his explosive device in first precinct of the city after killing eight people and injuring 17 others. Uh, the victims were civilians. Without providing more details, no one's claiming. Okay. Next. People living, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, epidemic hazard in Europe. People living in Leeds and Liverpool are being warned of an outbreak of measles in the two northern cities. An NHS warning has been made over the rapid rise in cases. The infectious viral illness is easily spread and can lead to complications, particularly in people with other conditions. Ask your GP, I guess it's general practitioner, for... The free vaccine. <laughs> if you or your children haven't had at least two doses already, step right up and get your free mercury in your blood. The initial symptoms of measles develop around 10 days after you're infected, but won't be able to be, to be spot on the signs of the disease if it was reported here in Nottingham. According to the NHS, measles starts with a cold-like flu symptoms that develops about 10 days after becoming infected. This is followed a few days later by the recognizable measles rash. For most people, the illness lasts around 7 to 10 days. In total, a day or two before the rash appears, many people with measles develop small grayish-white spots in their mouths. Not everyone with measles has these spots, but if someone with them ha in addition to other symptoms listed above or a rash, it's highly likely that they have the condition. <coughs> Excuse me. This is going to be sending people in a spiral here. The spots will usually last for a few days. The measles with rashes appear around two or four days after the initial symptoms and normally fades after about a week. You'll usually feel most ill or on the first or second day after the rash develops. And, um, not give it a number here. They just said outbreak. Rapid rise in cases. So what is that number? I don't know. All right. Again, folks, go to your searching your homework and get prepared for this. No one identify it, what it looks like, symptoms, etc, etc. Extreme weather in Europe. Residents and businesses in uh, Mount Millic in assured damages following extensive flooding. Now we got flooding there. Hazmat. Oh no. So no this isn't chlorine or ammonia. Uh, three uh, three workers need medical treatment after a mystery chemical leak at a depot in Melbourne's northeast. Two small chemical containers burst on the back of a truck at a council yard at Belfield on Friday morning, leading to the evacuation of 18 staff, the Metropolitan Fire Brigade reported. Paramedics treated three workers at the scene, and the area is on lockdown while investigation continues. Um, so these chemicals burst, they're saying, 
Um, burst on the back of a truck. Oh boy. <clears throat> Expanding, exploding. I don't know how to identify that. All right, volcano eruption. In uh, Mexico, a cloud of smoke, ash, and stream and steam rose around 5,900 feet over Mexico. Uh, Popo Catapelt volcano following November 23rd's eruption, the largest since 2013. Uh, Universal reported. Mexico's National Center for Prevention of Disease warned residents in center Mexico, central Mexico not to approach the volcano's crater and of the potential for volcano ash to fall in the southeast of uh, Popo Catapetel eruptions in 2013 from this volcano. Mexico's most active volcano caused airlines to temporarily cancel flights to and from Mexico City due to the threat from volcanic ash. Okay. <clears throat> All right. We have um, biological hazard in Germany, Europe. Germany has reported an outbreak of low pathogenic N, uh, H5N2 bird flu on a farm in the lower Saxony region. Okay, where is this? Germany. Bird flu. Uh, biological hazard in Russia. The press service of the regional veterinary says outbreak of avian flu has been detected. More flu. It is the season, folks. Um, let me delete some of this up to tornado. Tornado in Indonesia. Uh, the tornado ripped through a densely populated area in Indonesia, East Java Providence, on Wednesday, injuring 35 people and damaging more than 600 homes. The head of local disaster mitigation officials said the tornado, with spins of 70 kilometers per hour, that's it. That's all it takes to make a tornado. Wow. It was like hundreds of miles an hour. 45 miles per hour carved a path of destruction in... Wow, interesting. Oh, man, that's a lot. Um, injured 35 people. I don't see any deaths, so praise God for that. Must be a marathon going on. I keep seeing dozens and dozens of people jogging by. All right, the Egyptian Ministry of Health population declared in uh, Sudan, Africa, 36 air, sea, and land ports as part of an effort to guard the country against a viral hemorrhagic fever. I thought they were going to say um, um, the Madagascar plague, the bubonic pneumonic plague. And now they're going to worry about this thing, too. Directed the activation of uh, preventative and surveillance systems after news and had circulated regarding cases of the uh, VHF of the eastern Sudanese city. <clears throat> Quarantine department, international airport. State of emergency in 36 air, sea, and land ports. <clears throat> uh, this year in 2017... Uh, 70 cases up until October 2017. <clears throat> be screening. They're going to be screening Sudanese passengers for possible cases. <clears throat> um, I don't know. It seems like they're overreacting. No? Two cases, 70 cases. Um... A fatality rate of up to 50%. Transmitted from... Transmitted to people from animals, mosquitoes, and human contact. All right, so this thing spreads quickly, easily. <clears throat> uh, he asserted that Egypt takes the necessary precautions and procedures to fortify against plagues and infectious, infectious diseases from at least 108 countries. Viral hemorrhagic fevers are a group of illnesses caused by four 
families of viruses. They include, oh, here we go, Ebola, Marburg, Lassa, and yellow fever viruses. Oh, I see. So this hemorrhagic fever is, they're saying, one of the family of four. Mm. All right. Hopefully they're just not crying wolf, but and, uh, <clears throat> sending people into a spiral of panic here. Kenya, Africa. Got an epidemic hazard. Cholera has swept across Mombasa following recent rains and flooding, killing two and leaving 25 others hospitalized. Officials confirmed a mother and a child died of cholera, forcing mass testing of residents who suffer from similar symptoms. <clears throat> oh boy. Pray for these folks. Biological hazard in India. 46-year-old man Wednesday died after being stung by a swarm of honeybees. Uh, biological, state of Arizona. Uh, Pinal County, Maricopa County, and state park, I'm sorry, state public health officials are warned, are warning about an increase in rabies cases near the trails. Watch out for the crazy wild animals. Biological hazard, Caribbean Sea. Health authorities Wednesday said they were awaiting confirmation of a pre preliminary test to determine whether hurricane-battered Dominica has registered the first quake of hantavirus. I thought I read that already. Did I not? Or is that an update? Uh -huh. I right, hear the situation. Update volcano eruption from Bali, Indonesia. <clears throat> um, Mount Agung volcano in Bali has left out a puff of black smoke and ash in small eruptions, prompting Singapore to advise its citizens to be ready to evacuate the holiday island at short notice amid concerns about a bigger eruption. Okay. Extreme weather in uh, Europe, United Kingdom. Flooding is, is causing chaos across um, Cumbria today with roads, schools, train services, and sports matches canceled or, or closed. Epidemic hazard in Yemen. Is this the update of cholera? No, just the Yemen, Middle East. Now what's going on there? Three people have died of suspected diphtheria in conflict hit Yemen. Doctor says Wednesday of the World Health Organization and International Committee of the Red Cross warned the disease was spreading. Currently, there is an increase in diphtheria cases due to the poor vaccination coverage for children under five years of age. Here's a thought. You have the problem with, um, how do I keep forgetting who this is? Um, oh, excuse me, I gotta yawn. Um, this other country, I forget who it is. The other guys in Yemen there. There's the good guys and the bad guys. I'm gonna call them the bad guys. I want to say Saudi Arabia, but I keep thinking it starts with Al something. Um, anyway, they're blocking the roadways for transportation of supplies, goods, medicals, you know, food, water. Um, and they won't let anything through because it's some sort of rebel, you know, territorial dispute claim going on there. So, I have a feeling God's going to make this so bad that they, those that are doing this blockading are going to get sick. Look at what he did with Egypt. Let my people go. Stop oppressing my people, because this is what this cholera is. People are being, it's being used as a bioweapon. They're poisoning the water. They're sabotaging these people's water, 100% guaranteed. There's no way cholera affects an, an area that long. First of all, people would disperse if they could. They face probably certain death of a firing squad if they try to. Or, or these renegade, you know, whatever groups that are out there. They, this would dissipate, you know, unless they're drinking their own cesspool. And it's, a, it's in a one big cycle, water. You know, 
humans aren't that stupid to keep drinking, you know, what would Einstein say? The, this definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Sort of like that right now, you know? All right. Um, let me uh, pray for these people. This diphtheria, eh, they don't need anything there. They need, they need help. That's all they need. What time is it? 9.52. Extreme weather in Ireland, Europe. Torrential rainfalls. Again, boy, oh boy. environmental pollution in Alberta, Canada. Alberta Energy Regulatory Regulator says a pipeline owned by Calgary-based Mount Boston Oil and Gas has leaked about 560 barrels of an oil and water mixture at a northern Alberta well site. Sounds like uh, fracking. Uh, and that's a lot, 560 barrels. Um, how, many, how many gallons are in a barrel? Say 55. 55 times uh, 560. That's a lot, 560. <clears throat> he says the company reports the oil emulsion spill affected about 5,000 square meters of swampy muskeg, adding there has been no reports of injuries to wildlife or to damage nearby creeks. Right. Not yet. Hazmat, New Zealand, Australia. One person has been taken to the hospital of a mysterious chemical leak from a container at Auckland Airport. Leaking sprang 1,000 liter container covered a large area. Two people smelled, taken to the hospital. This is a marathon of some sort. There's a... Uh, Police escorts out there and uh, cars riding by. I see uh, uniforms. What is maybe a fundraiser thing? A couple people in shorts. It shouldn't be. It is cold. All right, last one. Biological hazard. State of Massachusetts. State wildlife officials Wednesday confirmed a coyote attacked two people in North Attenboro Monday with was rabid. Hmm. Um, where were these? One was bitten in the coyote Monday, even as police officers in response to call heard a call about the strangely behavior animal. Um, getting under her trailer home. Police had called about the afternoon and began creating ruckus under the, her trailer and it would not be scared off. Two officers were... Where's your gun? You're living in a trailer by yourself. And usually those trailer places are not amongst uh, heavily densely population. Oh, it's Maryland again. Think, never mind. I don't think you're allowed to own guns in Maryland. It's the United States, but it doesn't matter. Same thing for New York and, uh, oh, you know, all the other problems. Country, uh, states, counties, politicians, they've, they've done away with the, uh, they suspended the Constitution in a lot of states, in case you haven't noticed. All right, um, that's it. YouTube, let me see, where am I at? Done with this. Oh, I had it open already. All right. Don't need that open. Don't need this open. Um, just real quick, let's see the earthquakes of anything crazy. One hour ago, extreme weather. Uh, Isles of Man in multiple areas. Extreme weather. I gotta go. I gotta wrap this up. A dog was been swept away. I did that. Yes. Earthquake in China two hours ago. Let's see what we got for the quakes here. I missed anything? Uh, blue, 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 blue. Looking for other things. Volcanoes. Uh, we did that. Tropical storms and volcanoes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they're huffing and puffing. That is good. Okay. 
Uh, let's refresh this. I'm just going to go over the first couple rows here to see if there's any crazy uh, things going on here. Paul Bagley, breaking. Argentina submarine lost at C-44 on board. And we're praying for these folks, praying for them to be found. Hopefully they'll be rescued. Egypt mosque attacked. 184 dead. Northern Sinai. Paul Bagley. Daryl Eves, YouTube stuff. Beard, crazy skunk catching cook. Yeah, that's not biblically clean. I wouldn't do that unless it was life and death. Paper towel raft floating smartphone trick. Dr. Eric Berg. Um, world's first astro first automated ship will sail in 2018. Stunning implications. Oh, this was great. This guy is sitting on a panel here in New York, up in District 21 here, which is a swamp of parasites, of uh, liberals that would rather have uh, Kim Jong-un and his rules than uh, the United States rules um, when they'd be all out of a job and on the shooting firing range anyway. But this guy... Um, was the only one on this board, this panel, that stood up for not impeaching Donald Trump and was outraged and should be outraged and everyone that should be outraged whenever they hear stuff like this. So go listen to his speech, uh, Mert Melfa, um, or even if you type this in, conservative NY21 congressional candidate, hammers eight Democrats candidates. Stands, uh, he stand, He's standing up for Trump. The president of the United States, they're all screaming impeachment, you know. He's sickened to be up there. Well, praise God. Pray for him. In Jesus' name we pray for him. Uh, to us. Uh, let his voice be heard. All right. Um, that's it. I'm going to go. Oh, this was really cool. Check out these batteries. These batteries can be, I think it's like 10 bucks for two of them, are rechargeable, and they plug in USB port through, through the, uh, like, through like an iPhone. You could plug, um, not an iPhone, a, um, a phone adapter, a phone plug-in. And it's not, not iPhone. Uh, so definitely check that out. One Step Survival. Yeah, let me click on it real quick, and then I gotta go mute that. Marvel, what do you got going on here, Marvel? Why is this so dark? Ah. Uh. Oh, I can skip it. I'm sitting there waiting to skip this thing. All right, I'll let, end it off with it. So it's called, um, in the description here, and he shows you, see it comes with the cord? And you can plug it into each of these batteries to charge it on a USB, which can easily be done by some little cheap solar thing. Uh, I think it comes in 9-volt, AA, and AAA. Really cheap. Um, let's see what this is for that. Yeah, I think this is the link. So it takes you to Amazon.com. Here it is, called Micro USB Charging uh, Rechargeable Batteries. Four, you get four of them. Nine ninety nine, free shipping. Oh, I'm sorry, on orders over twenty five dollars. So it's nine ninety nine for four of these. It comes with the charger. I would get two of two double A, two triple A packs, and you know, maybe two or four nine volts. See the nine volts? Awesome idea. Great idea. But here's my thought on this. Great for the transition. Great if you gotta get through the first winter perhaps of things of all these supplies. You're not gonna be able to rely on them year after year after year after year if society's not gonna rebuild itself which I don't think it is, which I think for the most part is the whole purpose for of extreme prepping 
and the 100 year plan, which this ministry really is all about. So, you know, it's really up to the individual. It's great to have these things, but I would do it with a, um, almost like a, almost like a skepticism. You know, like I got these things, I have these tools, I have these, these gadgets, these widgets, these, you know, great things to survive in the wilderness. And I hate when you, I don't hate, but it's annoying almost to the point when you see these guys going out into the wilderness doing their survival things, and they have all these nice pretty toys, and nice pretty clothes, and clean shaven, and you know, um, like the best of the best of everything, and they're continuously going into their bag to pull out bacon, and eggs, and spices, and all these things, and, and they're sitting in the middle of the wilderness, and saying, I'm surviving, I'm the survivalist. No, you're not. <laughs> You're, you're camping in your backyard, basically. Um, but they do have those shows occasionally, um, or these guys just going out there with a camera, you know. Listen, I've been out here for, you know, six months, six years, ten years. With that one guy, Mick, Mickey, he's been out there, I think, for 25 years. You know, finally found him, they're going around selling him. He's going around picking up, picking moss off of trees and brushing his teeth with it, <laughs> And he's going into these hollow, hollowed out trees or caves saying, oh, I got this stuff stored over here. And it's, you know, it's some sap or it's a knife or it's a, you know, this, it's some, either something from the, that he built or it's from the wilderness or they took with him. That's, you know, lasting for hundreds of years. Um, it almost is a, it's a security, what are they called? A false sense of security. That's what I'm looking for. Don't allow yourself to fall into that trap without having that long-term mentality set for a 100-year plan. Don't be fooled. Don't be uh, given into that position uh, where you are only in need of a week's supply, a month's supply. That's nothing. That's nothing. 100 years in the wilderness, off the land that God gave you. You've done it for thousands of years on the planet, right? So, your turn. All right, let's close with a prayer. And I hope that you start your own YouTube channel somehow, getting this word out. You have to have to get this word out, folks. It's not a choice. It's not a choice at this, at this point anymore. All right, let's close with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this ministry of preparedness. Please help us to resonate your word, Lord, of these seven end time churches uh, and to realize which one we are in, Lord, or multiple ones that we are in and how to avoid them and how to get out of them. And we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit impress upon us uh, to be a healthier church, Lord, a um, more naturally developed church and aligned with uh, the characters of your will, Lord, and your commandments and your help us to be obedient to you, Lord, more so we may be a church worthy of your kingdom, and that others may see this and want to be a part of that, Lord, and spread that same good message, and not that diluted, watered-down message, Lord, that a lot of churches give out, Lord, or that um, uh, that perception of the lifestyle that they live, Lord, even within that church, let alone outside that church, Lord, that does not align with who you are, Lord. Please bless our viewers and all their needs, Lord. Please help us to have a 100-year plan, Lord, to survive in the wilderness. We ask that you guide us, Lord, uh, in the time of persecution and oppression so bad uh, that we no longer are able to rely on society structures of uh, you know, law enforcement and military and uh, electronic stuff and water supplies. Um, uh, we please ask that, that you bless those, Lord, and help those to be given patience and endurance that are in this situation now, Lord. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, folks, thanks for joining. i got to run. Um, busy day ahead on this day of work. I am working today. All right, let's shut this down, and uh, God bless you, and happy Sabbath to all those that are celebrating this Sabbath. Take care. Bye-bye.